Welcome to Recurring Insight. It's the beginning of your upkeep, so it's time for another episode. I'm your host, Michael, and let's dive in. Today, we're going to be looking at the cards in Strixhaven that may see play in CEDH. To best do that, I'm going to be comparing them to similar cards that already see play. Let's start with the creatures. Archmage Emeritus is comparable to Beast Whisperer, which makes it into Brostorm decks, and I think that Archmage will be in a similar position. It can serve as a Storm piece or card advantage for control decks. It'll be more popular in low color decks, but Curious Control does run Rashmi, so it could see play in a few 3 and 4 color decks that lean heavily into Storm or Control. Before I move on, any creature that has Magecraft combos with Chain of Smog and 2 copy spells. One of the two generals from the set that could see play is Cody, Vociferous Codex. Before I posted this, I did see that Rebel Sun already made a video about this card. The gist is that you can use Freed from the Real and Peminzora to create infinite delayed triggers and start storming off. Conspiracy Theorist, unlike Mindblade Render and Azra Oddsmaker, makes you pay in order to draw. Additionally, you rummage rather than netting cards. However, its passive ability lets you turn that into card advantage. It also brings insane wheel and discard synergies to the table, but as it's a May ability, it won't prevent reanimation. Additionally, because you can choose how you stack your triggers, if you have Necropotence on the field, you can stack the discard triggers in your cleanup so that they're exiled with Theorist. You can then respond to the last trigger and start casting the instance you discarded. It probably won't see play in too many decks with more than 3 colors, but it'll likely see play in decks like Anya and Riel that have synergy with it. Extus Auric Overlord brings a lot to the table. Although it doesn't reanimate like Alicia or Marin, it's also an infinite mana outlet and combos with Dockside Extortionist. If you've got Extus, Dockside, and Worthy Cause, you can continuously cast Worthy Cause, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost and then putting Dockside in hand with the Magecraft trigger. In place of Worthy Cause, you can use another buyback spell as long as you have a sack outlet. That being said, it's competing with Timna and Jessica in the Mardu slot. Extus doesn't grind as well, but the combo and recursion potential Extus has means that it could be a viable general. Galazeth Prismari is pretty similar to Urza, but there are some key differences. First, Galazeth does have access to red and therefore lots of fun tools, especially Dockside and Breach. However, there are two other glaring differences. First of all, the mana generated can only be used for instants and sorceries. This is a huge restriction that lends itself to storm builds. Additionally, it isn't an infinite mana outlet. Between these two huge pitfalls, I don't think it'll really see play. Stormkiln Artist drew a lot of attention when it was spoiled for its storm potential. If you compare it to Burgi, it's more expensive and narrow, but you can save treasures for another turn, so it's better for grinding and prepping for a stormy turn. The treasures also carry sacrifice synergies, cough cough corvold cough cough. Additionally, it triggers when you copy a spell, which means that eventually you'll net mana with Haze of Rage. I think it'll see play in Corvold and then some low color storm decks. I really like the design of Wandering Archaic. That being said, comparing it to Mystic Remora and Ristic Study shows that it's more expensive and narrow, only hitting instants and sorceries. Its tax is more than Ristic Study, and it doesn't have the cumulative upkeep like Fish, and it lets you copy the spell, which has huge implications for counter wars. I'm kind of torn on this as it's expensive, but it does have potential. If I had to lay money on it, I'd say it'll see play in some grindier decks and some Sans Blue decks, but I think this is a card where you just have to see how it performs. Witherbloom Apprentice caused a bit of a ruckus when it was spoiled. Like Ral, Storm Conduit, it wins with Chain of Smog. It's a very fragile combo, as you can end up without a hand, but Ral can copy it, and being a Planeswalker is harder to remove. That being said, Witherbloom Apprentice has neither of these, so it's almost as fragile as the World Gorger combo. It might see play in Sans Blue decks that don't have a combo connected to their general. It's more likely to see play in Abzan, as having white grants access to silence effects that can protect it. Then we've got the non-creature spells. I am super hyped about Culling Ritual. It's not really comparable to anything in the format right now. It hits most dorks and rocks, and then can net huge amounts of mana, allowing you to convert it into an Adnaws or just dump the rest of your hand. Although it may not see play in every deck, I think that it's worth testing in most. It might be cut from stack decks, as it does hit a lot of their stacks pieces, but I think it'll see widespread play. 
Decisive Denial, like most modal spells, is more expensive than each mode warrants. However, both modes are useful, so it might see play in mid-range and control decks, provided they have a relatively beefy commander. Expressive Iteration will likely see play in low-color decks. It sees fewer cards than Impulse, and it's a sorcery, but it can generate card advantage, which most 2CMC cantrips can't. However, Impulse doesn't see play outside of low-color decks, so this likely won't either. Fervent Mastery probably won't see any play. It's more expensive than Intuition, and it's a sorcery. It doesn't bring any additional synergy to the Breach combo, and if you're doing a reanimation pile, at best it's a 50% chance with one or two cards, and it gets gradually worse if you've got more cards in hand. Plum the Forbidden has huge potential. It costs one more than Village Rite, and requires two creatures to be sacrificed in order to achieve the same effect, but it has a much higher ceiling. Additionally, it's harder to deal with, as you create a copy of the spell for each creature you sacrifice, so you need something like Flusterstorm in order to counter it. I think it'll see play in most creature-heavy decks. Rushed Rebirth is good. It's an instant, and it doesn't even have to be your own creature. That being said, I do think it was overhyped. Unlike Neoform and Eldritch Evolution, you do need a death trigger, and with the printing of Dockside, a lot of decks running red have transitioned to more bounce spells. Creature removal in white tends to exile instead of destroy, so it'll likely be better in decks running blue, as you can use it to find Thoracle at instant speed. However, it will likely make the cut in more control-focused decks. Solve the Equation will see a decent amount of play. It'll likely only be in low-color decks, but just compare it to the other options. Merchant Scroll costs one less, but you're no longer limited to just blue instants. It doesn't have a body like Spellseeker, but it also doesn't have the CMC cap, which can be huge. The lack of a body is what will keep it to low color decks, as Spellseeker made it into some 3 and 4 color decks that cared about creatures. Credit goes to Scryfall for the images. All in all, I love this set. So much. It has enough good cards that I'm genuinely excited for it, but it doesn't have anything on a Hull Breacher level of power. The link to the Rebel video about Cody will be linked in the description, and so will my Twitter and Insta if you want to hit me up there. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. I'm your host, Michael, and I'll see you at the beginning of the next upkeep for another episode of Recurring Insight.